Neath can't drive that with a front row having stood up. Jones really driven back, and this is the work of the bridge end battle. But Morris emerges. Yes, he scored. Well, out of nothing and on the retreat, they still rescue it. And Martin Morris scores the game's opening try. Six points, the difference. Morris and Bryant are the two at the back, the two sevens. Again, the outs and halves following a pattern. It's the high tester. Bateman had done so well there, but Williams has it covered. Alid Williams, that is. Although that ball again won by the Welsh All Blacks. Williams to Leite to Thor and a chance for Edmonds shows it. Webb to where the action, the captain is there as well. Caneath he sets it back. Edmonds at scrum half, Roland Phillips at outside half. This man is strong, determined. Again, it's on its way back. Williams playing the flanker role, the outside half, but that isn't clean properly. But Williams was offside. Beneath three quarters, just lying deeply. We haven't seen a great deal of them thus far. We'll just watch how tightly the bridge end three quarters guard that scrum. Bridges has already looked into the box, but this time decides Paul Williams, interestingly poised on that blind side, hoisted into the middle. Bateman early to the ball, so was Parry. The chance, Phillips, the pass up quite right for Leite. He stumbles, recovers well. It's too much time, really. And Bridgen need to pressurise more than that as Williams finally gets it back. There's lots of space out wide. As Thorburn releases Williams, he attacks Diplock. The timing is perfect. Edmonds is there. The slap from Bateman. What a superb tackle from Kevin Ellis. That's incredible. The scrum half, tremendous tackle. Still, it's alive, though. It's into midfield. Williams, the long pass to Edmonds. Leite, not quite the pace perhaps to be found on the wing. Thorburn on the retreat. But tremendous tackling work from the bridge end flanker. But Thorburn somehow has kept the ball alive. Bridges the thrust, still on his feet, finally lays it back. The drive still goes on in the shape of Williams. Now it's Bateman at scrum half. They're standing, there's Beeson Ball, drops the goal. Well, selected on the wing, just a little out of position. But there, Jason Ball, equal to the cause, just had one little look at the post. And the drop goal, so assured. Beneath try line. Well, this is a chance for Ellis, yes! Well, what a chance, how quickly he took that. The reflexes, so quick, the ball out of control, but down was Ellis, into the hands, away they go, and the try was there. Alan Williams with a drop kick at goal. Yes, the outside half succeeds and throws the game into a little greater turmoil because it closes the gap to just five points. The outside half so quick, so assured, and three points to him. And it's now seven to Bridge End, 12 to Neath. Alan Williams with his side just five points adrift. Mark Jones unopposed, but couldn't quite grasp it and control it, and it's offered Bridge End a chance to drive away, although David Austin immediately isolated. And, well, Canberra will be penalised here, Les Peart will point, and this is a dangerous position. And that's the second warning for Canberra. He was warned earlier on, there was nothing vicious in there, but he did put a boot in, I think, on somebody's legs. Very well, interesting decision going to be made here. Because Phil Bennett did. Yes, well, it is. There was no option. He put a foot in at that wreck. And it was spotted by Les Beard. And Andrew Canberra, having previously received a warning, now finds himself, as Phil Bennett warned him earlier on, not making the trip to Namibia. The intensity of feeling in that bridge end pack at the moment is amazing. Austin and company geeing one another up as Alan Williams drops a goal, gets his second successful kick at goal. Six points to the outside half, cuts the deficit to two points, 
And this quick final is suddenly alive. Bridge N10, Gate 12. And that scramble, that's a try. That is a try. Chris Bridges, last season's man of the match. This time a try. So quickly around and doing to Kevin Ellis what Ellis had done all afternoon to him. And Bridges eases his side into a six point lead. Well, there's the man of the moment. Salute his home supporters. He's given a handshake by the Bridge End coaches and Kevin Phillips. It's a taste he's grown to like. And he won't relinquish that all that easily. Holding that and kissing that Schweppes cap is something that he treasures. A very emotional moment for the Neath captain. Neath's cup then once again. But the scenes in the stand were just the start of the celebrations for the night. The street parties were already starting as the players made their way to the team bus an hour or so later. Some indication there, perhaps, of the journey that awaited us. Autographs were sought in all sorts of strange places. And song and dance would be the mood of the evening. As the Maltese cross, Neath's motif, was worn proudly by all. And as we joined them for a rather boisterous journey west down the M4, we found the players, quite naturally, in very high spirits. <laughs> so much noise back in the back. Uh, we don't know what we're talking about, but uh, I'm a proud man and a very happy man to be a captain. Such a good side. What sort of reception do you expect back at the Knoll? Oh, full one, full one. Yeah, very. very it'll be half as good as last day. It'll be tremendous. You've had about two hours now to think about the game. Uh, what are the reflections? Well, I thought we. Uh, Last quarter of my way, thought we deserved to win, but uh, Bridge and they came at us. We, we knew that they were going to do it, but uh, it was a bit harder than I thought. You've got a nice uh, black eye there. Where did that come? Yeah, I think that was when, Ed when Edmonds made a bit of a mistake, and it should have been my ball. And, uh, he claims he couldn't hear me, but uh, I shouted loud enough anyway. But uh, there we are, it's one Martin? of those things. Alan Edmonds on the wing and yourself collided at one stage. But there's a lot of leg pulling. It's part of the celebration after the cup win, isn't it? Well, it's easier to, to pull legs when you've won, and uh, you know we're happy we've won. And I'm sure Bridgend is disappointed, but they give us a hard game, and uh, you know it turned out to be a very close encounter. How it's crucial was it today that Jersey you had so many players beach. in your side who uh, are used to the big occasion, especially in goal kicking, because the difference in goal kicking was significant today. Well, yeah, I mean, I will missed. Uh, what did he miss three? But I missed two, so you know, what, what, one was the difference. So at the end of the day, it didn't make uh, make for much. Martin Morris, you came back to Neath at the start of this season from the police. It's not a bad way to end your first season back at the North. No, I've always said that uh, what I wanted from this season was uh, a cup winner's medal from uh, play for Neath. And uh, I regard it as one of the pinnacles of my career. It's not been a bad season, uh, all told, coming back into the Welsh side as well. No, it's been tremendous. It's a trick. We win a bit you know, and uh, I've only got it. Nice to see you smiling with a little bit of help from Dai Pickering on your right there. <laughs> Chris Bridges there with Martin Morris, Neath's try scorers. There had to be a stop halfway home, just in case the palette became a trifle dry, and the sun was almost setting when it was all aboard again for the final leg of the journey to the Knoll. The players having enjoyed their well-deserved break. Stanley's all about players, it's all about coaches, so let's get away from the, the real life of uh, rugby. It's not about the coaches, it's about players, and uh, we think in Neath we've got the players to go forward for the next uh, four or five years, uh, no problem. And uh, the coach is only secondary, the players are firstly, you know, don't we? A lively journey to say the least, but it was nothing compared to the amazing welcome that awaited the team when they finally arrived back. Greeted by hundreds of jubilant fans who had waited patiently and expectantly for the return of their heroes. Was tremendous, but this is something else, and uh, we've all worked for it. And we support has been with us all uh, 
a week in, week out on there, certainly here tonight in strength. And this is what makes all the hard work throughout eight gruelling months of the winter worthwhile? Well, exactly, because uh, without these people behind us, uh, we won't be a team, and uh, they've certainly been behind us all through the season. Yeah. This shows what uh, the success of Neath Rugby is all about, then. Yeah, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all like uh, being back at home, you know. Everybody is uh, kind and uh, thankful and uh, helping each other, and it's just tremendous. It's been a remarkable day, Kevin. Yeah, tremendous. It hasn't finished yet, too. <laughs> and coming back with you all the way from Cardiff shows uh, what, <laughs> what a fantastic club Neath is. Yeah, tremendous. And uh, that's all i got to say. Uh, I want to thank uh, the players and all the supporters. Thank you very much. I mean it. Kevin, well done. Enjoy the night. I'm sure you will.